What makes a guardian a guardian? Take our first breath with no memory of who we were before. Yet, we are inexorably drawn to the light. We fight. We die. And we live again. chosen for a reason, by something greater than ourselves. For as deep and wide as humanity's rivers have run, it has now been reduced to a precious few, needing something to believe in, and a place to call home. This is what we have been called to, the future that we fight for. The future we will protect. Shaped by the fires of each new battle, we are forged and sharpened into what we must become for the fight ahead. built is only the beginning, a symbol of what we can achieve, of who we are and our great purpose here. But the day may come when we will be tested, when all we hold dear is threatened. And then we will see is truly made of. That day has arrived. That day we've been waiting for. When we were talking about the slide setup for today, we've got a pretty cool presentation. We're like, hey, Luke, what do you want to put behind you? We're up on the stage. I was like, yeah, just can you put like a big ass two? Just, yeah. <laughs> Huge. It's like the, yeah, the giant. The reason why is because the two is a reminder. It's a reminder that Destiny 2 is going to be a new beginning for everyone. It's a convergence of veteran players like yourselves and new players into our universe. It's a chance for us to welcome the game into new audiences and communities, like the PC, where Destiny 2 will be available for the first time. <laughs> and in that other room that you're gonna go to when we're done here this morning, it's over there to play. It's got all kinds of cool stuff in it. We think it's pretty amazing. I'm sure you're gonna tell us what you think about it, too. <laughs> I know. We'll read about it on Reddit. To us, a sequel just represents an opportunity to start fresh. It represents a chance to welcome new players into our worlds, into the amazing Destiny community that we're all a part of. The second thing I'm gonna talk about this morning, as I am the last barrier between you and seeing the game, is the vision for Destiny 2. As we've been building this game, there have been three things that are rattling around our heads. Just three. Those are the things that the team and I are gonna be talking about this morning and sharing with you. The first one is a world that pulls you in. This is about having a story you can relate to. It's about having characters that you wanna, be, you wanna hang out with, characters you wanna, you wanna work with. And this is about having enemies, of course, enemies you wanna face. It's about the way we build our environments at Bungie. We wanna create experiences that make you seek what's around every corner. And that, that's the first part. The second thing is we wanna build amazing things to do. And this is just, this is amazing things to do for everyone, no matter your mood. If you're a solo player, in Destiny 2 today, we're gonna to talk about how we're changing the way exploring the world works. If you're a competitive player, I'm sure there are some people who enjoy Crucible in the audience. I saw 
I saw Triple Rec on a flight. If you're a competitive player, we've, we've rethought the Crucible from first principles. We're, we're moving all activities in PvP to be 4v4. We've rebuilt the sandbox in a bunch of ways for smaller team formats. We've, we've done this because we want to create a sense of mastery. In order to master anything, you need to understand it. And that understandability comes from a whole bunch of stuff that you're going to get your hands on later this morning. The third part here is cooperative. Everyone knows I like the cooperative part of Destiny. And in Destiny 2, we have a ton of new public events. We have brand new strikes. And of course, there's a brand new raid. And we're going to show it right now. No, we're not. <laughs> of course, right? I talk about the raid last because it leads me to my third point this morning, which is about there's always someone to play with. This is a big one for us. The raids in Destiny 1 couldn't be experienced by everyone. 50% of people who reached the level cap organized into fire teams and completed a raid. This is amazing. Like, I think this is almost a miracle. Because whether you did it through your friends list or the communities that you formed, or used out of game applications to build fire teams and take on these incredible challenges, or as I know, pull the network cable from Crota. <laughs> I know, that's like a year one deep cut. So is that. Uh, but that means tons of players, 50%, never had the opportunity to experience Destiny's most unique content. And that miracle that I talked about, the half of you who've played, that's not good enough for Destiny 2. So this morning, we're going to talk about how Trials, the Nightfall, and the Raids will finally be available to all players. Destiny 2's vision... <laughs> Destiny 2's vision boils down to this really simple statement. It's a world I want to be in. When I go there, there's always amazing things for me to do. And if I want, there's always someone for me to play with. On behalf of Bungie and our partners at Activision, thank you so much to the people in the audience who made the trip. Thank you so much to the people out in the chat spamming Senpai or whatever the emotes the kids are using these days. <laughs> I don't know, I'm too old for that. And to everyone else who spent any time in our worlds, Thank you. The wait is over. This is Destiny 2, and this is Homecoming. Yes! Hey, Cora, if you tell me this is a practical joke, well, it kills me to say it, but I, I would be really impressed. Impressing you, Cade, is the easiest thing I'll do all day. Let's get serious, people. Zavala, this is my serious face. Can't you tell? Ikoro, what have you got? Someone or something has sabotaged the Skyline defense systems. And comms have been spotty for the last few hours. Every sensor beyond the wall has gone dark. Hmm. Maybe it's just the storm. Maybe it's... What are the set feeds telling us? Nothing. Well, that's good, right? No. I mean, they're not there. There are no satellites. And that's not good. Battle stations! Everyone with me!
missile back there. We will hold this line until the last civilian is safely away. Never shut up about?
shield generator should be straight ahead. Thanks. If the giant burning two isn't enough of a clue, spoilers, we lose. Despite the awesomeness of the Dawn Blade we just looked at, we're defeated in our backyard. Earth's last safe city is safe no more. Destiny 2 is a game that opens with loss. In one fell swoop, players will lose their powers, they'll lose their home, and maybe the saddest of all, they will lose their vaults. <laughs> just, I just need a minute for Fatebringer. Okay. And it's all taken by Dominus Gaul, the leader of the Red Legion, who you just got introduced to at the end. Gaul, or Gary, as he's sometimes referred to. <laughs> Gaul is here for a simple reason. He's been raised since he was just like a little turtle, just a little guy to believe that he and the Red Legion should have been chosen to receive the Traveler's power. Gaul believes in a better class of Guardian. He's here because he believes the Traveler, in choosing us, made the wrong choice. And in Destiny 2, Gaul intends to show the Traveler the error of its ways. Humanity, us, we're just in the way. The game opens with loss and becomes a game about recovery. Recover your powers. Become strong again. Reclaim your connection to the Traveler and find powerful new gear, weapons, armor. Recover the Vanguard. Those three characters we just saw, Zavala, Cade, and Ikora, they're all dealing with this loss just like we are and in different ways. Zavala, the leader of this whole thing, is having an existential crisis. He's wondering things like, without the light, are we even guardians? Although it's like, it's Zavala's voice, not mine, so it's way more awesome. It's way better. Ikora's angry. The warlocks who like, value so much of their connection to the Traveler and knowledge, one of those two things has been taken away. So in her rage, she's fled. We we'll have to find her. And then Cade, sort of plucky hunter leader. Cade goes off and does the least expected thing of all. He goes off and tries to be a hero. And what happens next is pretty expected, because it goes totally sideways. Let's take a closer look at the game scenario and the things you're going to chase in Destiny 2. Hey, you two. Give me a sec. Zavala's doing the hero thing in the plaza. Me? I've got a date with whoever's behind this. It'll be a short date. Destiny 2 tells a brand new story. What happens when a world full of superheroes loses their powers, their history, and home? Since Destiny 1 released, there's been no foe that they could stand before and not tip over. Whether it's Crota, Oryx, spider monsters, whatever. But in the opening of Destiny 2, players realize there is, in fact, a foe who has the power to not only take everything you own away, but to take your power away. Dominus Gaul is a Cabal Warlord who has brought with him the Red Legion and has come to our system to take the Traveler's powers, the Light, take it for himself. Gaul's jealous. He wants to have the Light. He wants to be chosen. Gaul is a different villain. He's not a psychopath who just wants to erase humanity off the face of the Earth. He feels like this is something that is owed to him because of everything he's been through. 
he's a villain who you're like, yeah, this guy kind of has his stuff together. He's more like uh, Alan Rickman's character from Die Hard. <laughs> like, minus all the Britishness. The protector itself, the traveler, is put in a cage, and in an instant, all guardians lose their light. Unexpected and irreversible. You can no longer go back to the tower. You can no longer even walk. All you can do is stumble. Nobody expected that light could be taken away once it was given. The city has been lost and the vanguard's been cast out. And you are the hero of this story. Whether you're a titan, a warlock, or hunter, you have to go out and get your powers back and take back the city. Whether you're playing Destiny today or it's going to be your first foray into the franchise, Destiny 2 is a new adventure for everyone. It's a fresh start for all players. Destiny 2 has an all-new cinematic campaign. There's more cinematics than we've ever had before. How long before the fleet's combat break? And more story missions. There's quests, there's adventures, there's going to be people talking to you. Let's bring them home, you and I. All new worlds to explore. We've got cooperative strikes for three players, new nightfall strikes, and a brand new raid. In Destiny 2, we built you all new weapons, all new armor, and a pile of brand new exotics. We also redesigned the weapon slots. They're gonna have a kinetic weapon, an energy weapon, and then a power weapon. Power weapons are things like fusion rifles and sniper rifles and grenade launchers. In that energy slot, and the kinetic slot, you can have the same weapons. The new weapon plan was designed to provide players with more freedom and more choice to use the stuff that they love. Each character has these new supers, and they're really changing the way it feels to play the game. We have the Dawnblade. You can cast your super, you've got your sword, and you're flying over everyone, and you can just rain down fire, phoenix, projectiles that just decimate people. And then you have the Sentinel. The Sentinel is a Titan, and he is able to summon a shield that he can just knock his opponents out with, where he can throw his shield and just bang it off dudes' heads. And then you have the Arc Strider. They summon this mystical staff and wield it like a crazy acrobat, cracking enemies in the head. It's awesome. The idea of losing your home and being cast out and the lengths that you go to to get it back, it's all tied together to be something that's really meaningful. The sense of starting as an underdog and climbing to a great height is really fun. Destiny 2 is the place where we get to reach back out to everyone who could enjoy a sweet first-person shooter in a future world with giant awesome aliens to fight and gear to chase and powers to use and say, come check this world out. Come get invested in this world and in this story. Are you guys ready to check these worlds out? Yeah. Yeah. You're going to applause after every sentence. I'm going to be up here for a while. Uh, this is what we get to do. We get to build worlds. This is what, when we make Destiny, we get to build worlds that pull you in, and you get to visit again and again. And then we get to fill those worlds with action, like what you saw in Homecoming. I have two kids, and just like you guys, they play Destiny a lot, I can tell, don't worry. Especially the guy with the Titan armor on. <laughs> and my oldest plays a lot like I do. He's a solo player. He loves the campaign. He loves story missions. He patrols the wild as a lone wolf. And he loves it. I think I said that a few times. My youngest likes to compete. He's always in the crucible. You guys know the feeling. 
He's also in a clan that he raids with. So I'm not going to tell you how old he is because he's, he's already better than me. And, uh, and he reminds me about it all the time. Hey, Dad, look what I got today. Check me out. You guys know what it's like, right? And I'm like, I got to go into work the next day and deal with another child in my life, Luke Smith. <laughs> and he's like, guess what I got last night? Check me out. That's my best Luke Smith impression. The point is, there's a lot to do in Destiny. And it's this variety that can appeal to all of us, right, in any type of mood that we're in. And now we've added more. Destiny 2, there's, there's more to do than any game we've ever made at Bungie. So we're going to start with what's coming back. We start with a brand new story, the Red War Campaign. It's going to send you across the solar system and back to all new places. Yeah. On your journey, you're going to experience new missions and more cinematics than we've ever had in a Destiny game. You just saw a part of the first mission, Homecoming. And today, we're going to get the controller in your guys' hands, and you're going to get to play it for yourselves. Yeah. Strikes are back. The cooperative missions, you guys can play with your friends if you have them, or guardians you haven't met yet in matchmaking. We've got a new strike. It's called the Inverted Spire. And you guys are going to get to play that today, too. Yeah. It's, it's going to take you to one of the new worlds, Nessus, through Red Legion territory and into a Vex stronghold, where you're going to fight a three-stage boss. It's pretty sweet. And then there's the Crucible. Yeah, yeah, I was going to ask. PvP players, thanks. A competitive multiplayer, the place that brings you into combat with the most dreaded opponents in the world of Destiny. You guys. Like Luke said, we've made some big changes in, to the Crucible in Destiny 2. We're building it for, for PvP players. It's now 4v4 across all the game modes. Yeah. The new HUD has got information about your opponents, like whether they have their super ready, whether they picked up power ammo, all towards the same goal, to make it an experience that's easy to get into, but it's hard to master. Yeah. So we got new maps, we got new modes, and we believe this is the best PvP offering that Destiny has ever seen. Today, we're introducing one of the brand new modes. It's called Countdown, the first ever attack defend mode in Destiny. Internally, we've had some pretty intense play tests. And today, well, you guys are going to get to play that too. So, yeah. So, take a look around because these are your teammates and your opponents. That's right. Of course, of course. <laughs> any day, any day. Of course, we have a brand new raid. Yeah. And we're going to show it to you later. <laughs> the pinnacle activity, the biggest challenge a guardian can face. Anyone that's ever completed one of these knows there are mysteries for you guys to find, to solve together on your own. So we're going to leave that to a later day. And then there's another area that we've made really big improvements to, we're really excited about. Exploring the worlds. Yeah. Really, really cool stuff. So for many players, exploring the world's its own reward. Patrols were an invitation to touch down on a landing zone, gain favor with the champions of humanity. But in Destiny 2, we've made being in the world so much better than just doing patrols. There's so much more to do as you explore. Now, you can launch all of the new activities in the world without going to orbit. Yeah. <laughs> it's my favorite place to go in Destiny. Uh, there's still patrols, ambient encounters, materials and chests for you to find, public events that now have heroic objectives, but now, there are adventures, treasure maps for you to follow. 
lost sectors for you to discover. Just choose a landing zone, and the rest is up to you. You're going to meet new characters in the world. They have their own story to tell. They're going to send you on those side missions, adventures. The adventures are filled with new mechanics, new encounters. They're going to take you to new places, and each have their own rewards that's going to make your guardian stronger. These same characters are also going to mark your map with mysterious locations to discover. These we call lost sectors. When you descend into these dungeons, you're going to find a cache of treasure and a boss that holds the key. Yeah. All of this is going to be easier to find in Destiny 2 because of the new map to guide your way. You can choose to play the way that you want. You can search for lost sectors, complete adventures, rally to public events. They now show up marked on your map where and when they're going to happen. These activities are the foundation of Destiny 2, and we're going to take you to all new places to do them. Four brand new worlds, worlds filled with mystery, adventures, and new characters to meet. But the team can show you these worlds better than I can, so let's check out the new worlds of Destiny 2. We have these incredible worlds to explore. There are all new destinations, new planets with incredible spaces and secrets hidden. Now we have stuff tucked around every corner, under every locked door. There's something there for you to find. The map is a huge part of this new player experience for Destiny. Now you can actually go directly from one planet to another planet without going to orbit first. You can just open the director, pick your new destination, and go straight there. It's about getting you into the action faster. We want to remove as many barriers as we can between your gun and the enemy's face. Everything you're doing on every destination is about getting more powerful, and it's about getting the band back together. The vanguard have been scattered, and as a player, it's your job to go out to these mysterious destinations and gather them back together. And everywhere you go, it's about growing more powerful and learning how to go back and take back your home from the dawn. One of the first destinations that you're going to go to is the European Dead Zone. This is an incredible place. It's the largest destination we've ever built, easily, maybe by a factor of two. And we have found a refuge where we've built a camp. It's the place where humanity stops fleeing. It's where they decide to, you know, plant a flag, start getting strong again. One of our new worlds is Titan. It's a moon of Saturn. If the light can find its way back to you. Then perhaps there is hope for us all. That's where Zavala chooses to go to heal his wounds and to recover from the assault and the defeat that he's just suffered. It's this incredible methane ocean with 40 meter high waves, and there's an old human utopia there that's sinking into the ocean. These huge monolithic structures constructed by humanity at the peak of the Golden Age. There's literally no landmass on Titan. It looks like the ocean. I don't know how long this portal's gonna stick. Cade is on a planetoid called Nessus. It has been totally occupied by the Vex. They have transformed it almost entirely into one of their machine worlds. It has its own native vegetation, and the landscape has these incredible canyons that are actually based off of this、um, word I will mispronounce called tepui, <laughs> just like these Brazilian plateaus. And then we go to Io, which is this sort of sulfuric yellow moon of Jupiter. Io is the last place in our solar system that the traveler touched before the collapse happened. And you can imagine that a place where the traveler once appeared has a bunch of mythology and lore and mystery surrounding it. It's a very sacred place to guardians and particularly warlocks and particularly like Korra. This is where I return.
stories in my personal gaming history have involved other people, from bonding with my own brothers to leading my own guilds and running tournaments for the different games I've loved. You know, growing up, becoming a part of these communities were some of the first times I ever felt like what it was to belong. And I'm incredibly grateful for the friendships that have come from playing those games and the impact that they've had on me. You know, over time, I've come to understand just why games are so important. Games are the best medium for, for bringing different people together. <laughs> you know, and now at Bungie, I'm surrounded by so many different people who have very similar stories. And it's an absolute privilege to be part of a studio who cares deeply about bringing people together and building communities in the games that we create. The last three years has been an amazing experience watching Destiny launch and seeing our communities form. You guys have worked together to solve the challenges that we've thrown at you. You've teamed up to help each other learn how to play the ins and outs of this game. And you've gone above <laughs> and beyond it, the game itself to better the lives of others. You have helped us build a world that has brought people together. And we are so proud of the amount of respect and love that has defined this community. So many lives have been changed by you, and they will continue to be changed. We know we have to continue to support this, and today I'm happy to say that in Destiny 2, clans are coming into the game. <laughs> so, for those of you who are unfamiliar with clans, they're optional teams that you can join, making it easier to play with other people. For me, playing with my clan has been core to my Destiny experience, but up until now, coordinating with my clan had to happen outside of the game. With Destiny 2, we're bringing official clan support into the game. We want it to be easier. We want it to be easier for you to manage and grow your clan. So we're adding in-game rosters. We're adding tools you need to build your fire teams and custom banners for you to help shape your shared identities. <laughs> On top of that, we're adding a reward system that is shared by every member of your clan. So whether you're the type of player who raids every week, or you only have the time to jump into a few PvP matches on the weekend, your contribution will help everyone in the clan get rewards. <laughs> now, we realize that joining a clan is not for everyone, and that's okay. But this is why I'm super excited to say that clans are going to matter to you even if you never join one. In Destiny, we had co-activities that were designed to inspire friendship. Activities like the nightfall, raids, trials. We deliberately kept them exclusive to dedicated groups of people because we believe that challenge is what fuels the memories between you and your lifelong friends. And we didn't think that matchmaking was a great solution because of just how toxic gaming communities can get when you throw strangers temporarily into these challenging experiences. And while we think that playing with a group of people that you know and trust is the best way to experience the game, we made it inaccessible for some players to experience our in-game content. So we had an idea. We have these clans who are our best examples of communities with positive culture. And we have so many players who are looking to play challenging content in this welcoming environment. What if we put those two together? We're trying something new in Destiny 2, and we'd like to introduce you to Guided Games. Now, at a high level, Guided Games is a system where clans and solo players can meet to play challenging activities. And as a solo player, you can use Guided Games to pick a clan you want to be paired with for a session of the raid, a session of trials, or the nightfall strike. <laughs> and the most important thing about this is that you get to see 
which clans are currently hosting, and, and you're able to read just a little bit about them so you know who they're looking for at that moment. You get to see how they present themselves, and you get a little sense of what type of players are part of that clan. And for players who are in an active clan, you know that building a full fire team of six to run the raid can still be a frustrating experience. And if you're a scheduler like me, then you're motivated to play with a consistent group of people. But you've probably had to deal with the experience of someone bailing at the last minute, and then you're scrambling to find the substitute, and you're just trying to keep the group together. With guided games, you'll be able to open up your party to new players who are looking for a group to play with you. <laughs> Through guided games, clans are now the foundation of the community that leads every player to all the most challenging content. And while we're really happy to say that everyone is going to have a chance to experience everything that Destiny 2 has to offer, we're really more excited about who you're going to meet and how you're going to play together. We know there is a community for everyone, and we hope that in Destiny 2, we can help you find one where you belong. Destiny 2 really tries to say, you belong. You can play by yourself, and that's awesome. But playing with someone else and tackling a challenge together, that's when we believe Destiny is really at its best. We've heard loud and clear from a lot of our players over the last couple of years that they really wanted to play in-game activities like the raid and the nightfall strikes that require a group, but they just couldn't get enough players online at the same time. Our big challenge is like, how do you take the ease of matchmaking and how do you take the magic of community building and help people find the people that you will have a great time with? We're adding two new systems to Destiny 2 that are pretty critical clans and guided games. Clans have always been a part of Destiny. It's just been a nameplate or a second friends list. But clans are finally in the Destiny 2 game. Clans in Destiny 2 are groups that you can join to play the game together. When you're looking for the clans, you kind of get to see their motto, you get to see their name, you get to see that awesome clan banner there, and you kind of get a sense of who they are before you say, you know what, yeah, I'm going to go play with these guys. Clans are going to have progression, rewards, and they're also going to be guides for the guided games experience. Guided games is a way to allow solo players to seek out clans, to find people who are already hosting a game who are just looking for one or two more players. So imagine you had five people who wanted to play Raid, but they're missing a sixth person. Then you have a solo player who's never played Raids before, and they're like, I just want to see what this is like. We'll match a group and a solo player together. Guided games are our way of making sure everyone who loves Destiny can play every piece of content we build. Guided games doesn't require any commitment. You can just have that really great experience, and then you can part ways. But our hope is, if you have a blast in that activity, maybe you'll make some friends and join the clan. Destiny, through clans and guided games, is going to help people fill out their friends list, so they're always going to have people to play with. What we try to do in Destiny 2 is weave this sense of community throughout the entire game. When you get to the farm, you meet this character, Hawthorne, who doesn't live in the city anymore, but she went out into the wilderness and created a community of her own. So we use the storytelling. It's created so many friendships that would have never existed, all because of this game. Andiamo! Wow! We really try hard to make sure from the ground up we're building this to be an experience that you want to share with your friends. And not only your friends, but the potential friends that you could have. I've never had a game that feels like home before, but Destiny just feels like home. There are no words to explain how much I love, love this community. People have found a new place to call home and new people to call family. Destiny 2 is really ramping up everything in every regard. I think it really is about the breadth of experience that you can have. Whether you're in match-made activities like PvP and Strikes, or whether you've taken a step into guided games, it's a game that's best enjoyed beside other players. That's the heart of Destiny. That's what the game's about.
As you just saw, Destiny is a series that brings people together. It's allowed me to reconnect with an old friend from junior high, someone I hadn't heard from in almost 20 years. I was sitting at the Sony E3 press conference a couple years ago, and Destiny the Taken King was just revealed on stage. And my phone starts buzzing, and I look down, and it's a message from this friend, and he's like, dude, do you know anything about this Destiny game? And I'm like, yeah, I know a little bit about this Destiny game. And since then, we've played the game together for dozens of hours. We've introduced our families in real life. And we've got the opportunity to laugh again, just like we did when we were kids playing Super Nintendo in his parents' basement. Destiny's also given me the opportunity to grow closer with my youngest brother. We talk on the phone now, almost every week. And for the first 10 minutes, instead of talking about our jobs or talking about our parents, we're talking about destiny. We're talking about our guardian's trials, where we've been in the world, the crazy loot we found, his story about how he got Gallahorn, the dudes he's been crushing in the crucible. And every week, he asks me about destiny too. And every week, I deny him, until today. With Destiny 2's clans and guided games, we aim to bring together millions of more people just like that. To reconnect with old friends and to meet new ones that you'll never forget, that's the promise of this game. To us, Destiny is more than just a game, though. It's a world where you can lose yourself for 10 minutes or for 1,000 hours, where you can explore the world at your own pace or take on some of the most competitive challenges available in video games today, where you can play solo, like I do most of the time, or with an old friend, a family member, or with someone you just met. This, this is Destiny 2. Destiny is a world I want to be a part of, where there are amazing activities to do every week, and there's always someone to play with. On behalf of Bungie and Activision, I want to take this opportunity to thank this incredible community that inspires us to work tirelessly to make this game a worthy sequel to the original. Before I pass on the baton to Eric Hirschberg at Activision, who's going to close out the show, here is the official gameplay trailer for Destiny 2. Hi, Cora. If you tell me this is a practical joke, well, it kills me to say it, but I, I would be really impressed. Impressing you, Kate, is the easiest thing I'll do all day. Ikora, what have you got? Someone or something has sabotaged the Skyline defense systems. Every sensor beyond the wall has gone dark. Battle stations! Everyone with me, now! In our home. And now they threaten our very existence. But if we attack together, we can take back our home or we die trying. 